Drawing a syndapsis is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. So as usual, we're going to start by creating a new canvas so that we have somewhere to draw. And for reference, these are the dimensions of the canvas that I will be using in this video, but make sure that you pick dimensions that work for your own project requirements. And if you're not exactly sure what that means, I have a video in which I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in order to pick a canvas size. So I will link that in the description below if you want to check it out. Otherwise, just create a canvas. And honestly, the only reason I am using these dimensions is because I am painting in a canvas that has some pre-textured texture to it <laughs> so you can see here it has some sort of a watercolor paper effect though this file is definitely not essential you can follow along without it it is really helpful i'm not gonna lie but it is not essential i'm still going to give you tips to get some sort of a watercolor texture to your piece even if you don't have this file if you want to check it out though it will be linked in the description below it is part of my big brush bundle and no matter which file you have, no matter which canvas size you have, we're all going to start with a sketch. So create a new layer, rename it to sketch, and then pick any color you want, because we're not going to have the sketch in the final result anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to go with gray. Now, in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate and is going to allow you to get a fairly good result, probably getting like 70 to 80% of the way there. And the other brush is going to be a brush from my big brush bundle, in this case, the watercolor brushes. And yeah, it's going to allow you to not only save some time, but just get a more professional result. So if you want to check it out, it will be linked in the description below as well. And there's always a special promo code just for the YouTube people, so you can definitely make sure to use that if you want to get the brushes. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and pick either the HP pencil from the sketching panel, or if you have the watercolor brushes, pick the coloring pencil. And we're loosely going to sketch everything, we're not going to create a super perfect sketch, we just want to roughly map out where everything is going to be. And I like to do that by drawing the main stem first. And for the main stem, honestly, you can draw whatever you want. You can have just like this kind of S-curve that I have here, or you can draw... <laughs> For some reason it's not working yeah you can draw more of a corner you can draw the craziest little um, stem you can think of so seriously here make sure to make it your own and just draw a basic stem shape and then you can thicken it by drawing a secondary line and as you can notice here on Syndaptus Pictus the secondary stems are alternating so you can just kind of map them out on your main stem just alternating them and they don't need to be all straight they can be kind of you know pointing upwards they can be curvy it all depends on a bunch of factors like the light source and, and everything so you can just imagine where you want your leaves to be and kind of map that out and you also want to make sure that even at the top here if we don't necessarily see the whole stem we're going to have a leaf there so you don't want to make the top feel bare or the bottom feel bare just kind of keep that in mind and if you want, you can also add a second line to thicken your secondary stems. It is not essential, but it can help kind of visualize everything. Now, the size and the shape of the leaf for the Scanathus pictus is really interesting. You can kind of think of it as a basic heart shape, but the bottom part is a little bit stretched out and also a little bit curvier. So it's going to look a little bit more like something like this as opposed to a basic heart. So yeah, the point is really low and the sides, the bottom sides of the, the heart are just curvier and more round than if you were to draw, you know, a pointy triangular bottom for your heart. So <laughs> hopefully that makes sense, but just kind of keep that basic shape in mind and then go around and add a bunch of leaves. And keep in mind as well that you don't want them to all be in the exact same angle and facing the right, like the same direction and having exactly the same shape. You want to get some variety in there. So make sure that you don't have just the same heart shape everywhere. It's also really important to keep in mind that at some point, probably the leaf is going to be overlapping the stem. So they don't need to be all facing outwards. They can be pointing in different direction and all of that. So you don't want them to all be just like sprawled out and kind of flat around the stem. You want them to be interacting with the stem. And you might also have some leaves that are folded. So kind of like this, you're just going to draw one half of the heart and then just kind of, you know, pretend it's folded. So 
go ahead, add all of your leaves and take all the time you need here. Feel free to pause the video and then we're going to meet in the next step in which we're going to start building the color. So for the color, we're going to do this in a few little steps. The first one is going to be just to lay down the basic colors. Now before that, I like to change the blending mode of my sketch to multiply, just so we can see the sketch a little bit better on darker colors. And then I like to just lower the opacity until I can barely see the sketch. Basically, I just want to make sure that I know where to draw, but I don't want the sketch to get in the way of drawing. And once that is done, go ahead and create a new layer below the sketch. And this layer is going to be for the main color and the leaves. We're pretty much going to draw everything on this one layer. So you can rename it to color, leaves, whatever you want, <laughs> if you're able to do it. For some reason, I really struggle renaming my layers, but there we go, we did it. And we're going to pick a green color. Obviously, for, for leaves, we want greens. But synapses tend to have a bluish, silverish, darkish, darkish. No, that's not a color. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a word. Uh, a more blue grayish type of green as opposed to, you know, like a green apple type of green. So pick that, but don't agonize over it for now because we're going to tweak it later anyway. So just pick some sort of a green and <laughs> we're going to keep moving with that. And in terms of brushes, you can go in the airbrushing panel, picking the art brush and then lowering the opacity. I would say probably around 30% of something like that. And as you can see, that is going to give you this overlapping transparency effect which is going to be really really important for the watercolor effects later you're obviously not going to be getting any of the paper texture or any of the like watercolor texture that comes with watercolor brushes but i'm going to give you tricks to kind of go around that later that being said if you do have the watercolor brushes from the big brush bundle go ahead and pick the dark edges watercolor and here we're going to try and draw every single leaf and just one stroke, well, one stroke per leaf. Because every time we lift a pencil, when we have either the transparency on the hard brush or just watercolor brushes, it kind of resets the brush in a way and you're gonna get an overlap. So try to just draw your one leaf with one stroke and then lift the pencil, go ahead and do another leaf and one stroke again. If you can't, it's fine. You know, if you get overlap within the leaf at this step, it's okay. We're going to later create, you know, uh, intentional overlaps <laughs> so it's not that big of a deal but if you can avoid it at this stage it is best to again just try to draw the leaves in one stroke and it is time for everyone's favorite the secret password so if you've watched this find the video please go ahead and comment fine we've been doing this for months now and seriously it is so much fun it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better which helps me to create you know better tutorials for you guys but the most fun thing about it is to see the creative community that we're building here on the channel it allows you guys to see who else is you know working on similar projects as you are and it also gives me a way to see you guys because you guys know me you see my face in the video in the intro you hear my voice all through the video but i have no idea who you are and when i really leave a comment i get to see your name sometimes even in face and again it's just such a cool thing to see the wonderful creative community that we're building here on this channel so just leave a comment saying vine and then we're gonna keep going adding even more color to our project here Great, so when you're done mapping out the basic color like this, we're going to go and add a little bit more color variation. So a really nice way to do that is to pick either the medium hard brush or the medium brush in the airbrushing panel, making sure that you lower the opacity again, or if you have the watercolor brushes, pick the basic watercolor. And since we have transparency in our brushes, we can just go over the color again with the same color set to the brush. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just go over some regions and this is going to create an overlay that is going to, well, create either shadows or just color variation depending on what we want. So in this case, we're going to focus these little blobs that we're going to draw in the top middle part of the leaves. So something like this. And the crazier the blobs look right now, the better it's going to look in the end. So you don't want to make something that looks really nice and polished you just want to lay down a bunch of random blobs that have random edges and that look like i was saying crazy for now this is the goal and you can do this step many times and i'm actually going to show you if you if we hide the texture and effects layer here you can see there is some texture that comes within the watercolor brushes um but if you don't have these watercolor brushes, this step of just adding random blobs, you want to do it many, many times so that you can recreate this texture 
with the free brushes. Hopefully that made sense. And you can kind of do this step many times by slightly changing the color and overlapping and overlaying these blobs. And the next step, we're going to actually blend these in a little bit more. So this is what's going to create the basics of the watercolor effects. So again, if you have the free brushes only, make sure you take all the time here that you need in order to create as much color variation as you can. And once you're happy, we're going to either set the smudge tool to the soft brush again in the air brushing panel, or if you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and set your paintbrush, so not the smudge tool, the actual paintbrush to the water blender. And here, what we want to do is blend in these weird digital looking edges and the blobs that we created. So we're just going to drag our brush around to blend in some parts of the color. We don't want to create a perfectly smooth gradient. We want it to look like watercolor, so we want it to look like there are pigments that are blending together and flowing all over the page. And so you don't really need to be precise here, you just want to do a rough blend, mostly focusing on your leaves for now. And once you're done with your leaves, we're actually going to go in and kind of refine the stem itself. So yeah, just for now, focus on the leaves. And once you're happy with your rough blending in the leaves, I really recommend you go ahead and hide your sketch layer, it's just so you can see a little bit better what you have to work with. And you're probably going to need to decrease the size of your brush quite a bit because we want to be really precise and only move the color within the stem. So experiment here, you can make it smaller or bigger until you find just the right size and then you're just going to blend in all the weird digital edges that are in the stem itself. Now here you can see for example I blended in kind of the overlap between the leaf and the stem so that the stem looks like it is over the leaf. But here in the bottom instead of doing that I'm going to blend in the stem stem inside the leaf so that way it is going to look like the leaf is in front of the stem so kind of keep that in mind you know experiment with your blending it doesn't have to be always blended the same way you can you know try stuff and if you don't like it undo and yeah take all the time you need here to blend everything in a way that you like and once you're happy we're going to move into adding even more color variation so once everything is blended in in the way that you like, you're going to select the selection tool here at the top, setting it to freehand and making sure that the color fill option here is deactivated. So it should not be blue, it should be gray. And then you're going to make a wobbly selection towards the bottom right of your canvas. So something like this. And you're going to feather your selection around 20%. It doesn't need to be exactly 20%, just you know, somewhere around that. And you're then going to go in the adjustment panel here at the top, selecting hue, saturation, and brightness for the entire layer. You are going to lower the brightness. You can see if I go to the extreme here, it's going to look black. But you're going to lower it until you create some sort of shadow that you like the feel of. And you can also play with the hue a little bit, maybe here, pushing it towards the right so that your color is a little bit more blue. And you can play with the saturation as well to make your color more gray or more intensely colored, depending on what you want. So here the numbers, you know, you can really make it your own. It doesn't have to be the same settings as me. And once you're happy with that, we're going to create some light at the top. So again, using the selection tool, creating some sort of a wobbly selection here this time on the top left. You're once more going to feather the selection around 20% and then hue saturation brightness to the entire layer. You're going to up the brightness, probably up the saturation and maybe shift the hue a little bit towards the left to get more of a yellowish color to your leaves. Kind of like if sun was hitting the top of the leaf. And you can use this technique as many times as you want to create completely random color variation, so not necessarily like a shadow or light. And you would do that by drawing a really random <laughs> uh, shape like this over your piece and then feathering it again around 20% and going back to hue, saturation and brightness for the entire layer. You could be this time just shifting the hue or just playing with the saturation or just the brightness. You can really experiment and create more color variation again pretending that you have pigments flowing around on your piece. So this is a really, really important technique if you're using the free brushes. You want to use this technique multiple times to create some randomness in your color. We're also going to use this tool to add more color variation, but in very targeted areas of our piece. So for example, we're going to add the little dots of silver on the leaves. We're also going to change the color of the stem and everything. So for that, you're not going to select any selection. <laughs> you're just going to go to hue, saturation and brightness and you're going to select pencil this time. And just so we can see what we're actually doing, you can really mess up the values here. So for example, bringing the brightness to the max or something like that. 
And we're all going to go ahead and pick the medium hard brush from the airbrushing panel, so super simple. And now you can see if you paint, the area that you paint on is going to be affected by these little sliders here. So it's kind of the equivalent of making a selection, but you're making the selection by painting on your piece. So that's really, really helpful. Now this is not what I want to do, I'm just going to undo this real quick and make sure that my brush is at 100% opacity. And what I'm going to do here is change the color of the leaves that are seen from the underside. Because synapses, oh, that's way too intense. <laughs> um, synapses have leaves with uh, like underside that is really silvery and blue. So I'm just going to select one leaf that I want to be seen from the underside. And then this leaf that is kind of folded in half, I'm just going to draw the bottom part here that is the underside. And then I'm going to use my settings here to create kind of this silverish color as opposed to a green that we have for the top of the leaf. So here you can really experiment and once more go with your own values, but basically the goal here is to get something that is a bit, like I was saying, a bit more silver, so we're probably going to lower the saturation, and a little bit more blue, so you're probably going to shift the hue slider towards the right. But again, feel free to experiment until you get something that you like, and once you're happy with it, you're just going to click on the magic wand at the top to exit the menu, like this. And we're going to use this technique again to change the color of the stem because the stem tends to be a little bit paler in general. So we're just going to pick again the pencil and the hue saturation and brightness tool and we're going to color over the stem. It doesn't need to be, you know, super precise but still try to kind of roughly stay on the stem area and not cover too much of the leaf because, well, we're trying to change the color of the stem, not the leaves. <laughs> And here, you're probably going to keep the hue pretty much where it was, so around 50%. And you might just want to up the brightness a little bit, maybe lower the saturation, maybe shift the hue a little, little bit. But honestly, I'm probably going to keep mine at 50%. We just want to have a slightly different color in the stem, nothing completely drastically different. Okay, so at this point we have a really nice space, but it looks a little bit boring and we're missing stuff like the little dots on the leaves and stuff like that. So we're going to add them really soon, but before that I personally like to just go ahead and clean the shape of my leaves a little bit. So just picking the eraser and setting it to honestly any eraser that you know you like. And I'm mostly refining the points of the leaves. I don't want to erase too much of the edges, especially if you are like me using the watercolor brushes and you're using the dark edges watercolor. Like the name says, this brush does have some darker edges which helps with the watercolor feel. So you don't want to go ahead and erase all the edges, otherwise you're going to lose that. But you can definitely make the points of your leaf a little bit you know, more precise to make your piece feel a little bit more complete and professional. We're also going to add, like I was telling you, the little dots on the leaves. So for that, going back to the hue saturation brightness using the pencil option, we're going to set our brush to the Nibula brush from the luminance section. And here we're again just going to up the brightness and maybe put the hue back to 50%, maybe lower the saturation. We're going to fix that later, but we just want to know what we're working on. And the main goal here is simply to add some blobs on the leaves. And depending on the cultivar of your Scandathus pictus, you're probably going to have different patterns. So honestly, we're not going to get into all the details here, but some leaves have almost the entire leaf covered with the blobs, some have barely any blobs. So you can really do whatever kind of pattern that you want and whatever kind of blob that you want. One thing that I do recommend though is you keep the middle central line free of blobs, so blob free. Uh, that kind that tends to be some sort of a, an area that usually doesn't have any silver on it. So as long as you avoid that, it should look like some sort of a synaptus pictus, which is what we want. And here, what I really like with the Nebula brush, as you can see, it does have a little bit of randomness in the edges, which is going to help both with the watercolor feel, as well as just, you know, getting these spots on the leaf that are really organic and are usually kind of a little bit smoother on the edges. So yeah, just go over and draw your pattern and take all the time you need here, but you don't need to be precise. So take the time you need in order to create an interesting pattern, but also don't agonize over it because it looks a little bit weird when we're like zoomed in like that. But once we zoom out and we see all the leaves together, we don't really notice as much as the, uh, like the precise feel of it. So as you can see here, just kind of roughly go ahead and map out the little dots. And you can also go ahead and highlight the 
edges, the borders of the leaf, at least one side, not necessarily both. It kind of tend to be a little bit too much as you can see here when you do both. But just doing a one edge because since the underside of the leaf is silvery blue, you tend to have one edge that is the thickness of the leaf that is going to show that silver blue. So once you've done one leaf, you can go back and tweak all your settings until you get a silvery color that you like. And then all you have to do is move on and do that same thing over all of the leaves. And here I'm going to speed up the video, but keep it rolling just so you can see what I'm doing, but so that the video doesn't take like three hours either. Not that this took three hours, but <laughs> you know, I just want a video to not be super long. So if you want to skip, you can skip. But if you want to kind of follow the same pattern that I am doing, here is what I'm doing. And if you're a regular on the channel, you might have noticed that in the past few weeks, I've been posting a lot more videos about plant drawing, which it's not only because I like plants, that would be true, but basically I was trying to teach you guys how to draw plants while also creating something special for a YouTube channel that I really like. It is called Good Growing and it was created by a girl named Emma and she just has this nicest energy and the channel is all about houseplants and you know guys I love houseplants so I just really like this channel and I thought you know what I want to do something special for her. If you want to check it out I will link her channel in the description below and you can maybe try and go find what I did and if you do find it uh, maybe comment on her video like, oh, I'm here from Genevieve Design Studio or something like that. So yeah, in theory, this would be the last video from this mini series about houseplants. But if you want to see more houseplant tutorial, just let me know in the comments below and I'll happily do more because I love plants. <laughs> So once you have all your little blobs added on your leaf, we can go ahead and kind of change the leaf color itself. Like I was telling you earlier, not to agonize about it. This is the time when we can just go in and without any selection, go in and use the hue saturation and brightness tool that we love so much with the entire layer selected. We're just going to, you know, be able to tweak here the color. So you can shift the brightness, you can shift the saturation, you can shift the hue, you can shift anything until you're really happy with it. So you can see here, you know, it makes a pretty big difference with or without this like color tweak. You can also use the fact that we have transparency in our color to just duplicate your layer here. And you can see because we have the two layers stacked now, the colors just look darker and more vibrant. And you can play with the opacity of the top layer to see how much of that effect you want to have. And once you're happy, you can merge two layers together. And that way you just get a bit more vibrancy in your color and just, yeah they are maybe a little bit more interesting. That might kind of bring up some weird things like this though. So you might want to go back to your water blending tool or your smudge tool and just kind of blend in some of the weirdness that might shine through while I'm tweaking the color. And you might also want to just randomly go over some of your blobs, not all of them, but just add some softness totally randomly here to accentuate the watercolor effect. So you don't want to go over all of the blobs, that would be too much, but you want to randomly go over some of them so that it looks a little bit softer in some areas. Again, just kind of pretending that the pigments are blending together in some spot and not really blending in some other spots. Now this is largely to look pretty good. We've done the hardest work for sure, but we're going to bring everything a little bit more together and add some more crispness and details. So for that, create a new layer above the leaf layer, rename it to details, and you're gonna color pick a dark section of your leaf. So I'm gonna go with this one. I mean, again, don't need to be super precise. And for now, we're gonna keep the opacity at 100 and we're going to pick a brush that has some grit to it. So either the 6B pencil or the 8P pencil in the sketching panel, or if you have the watercolor brushes, pick your coloring pencil. So you can pretty much use the, the same brush that you used for your sketch at first. And here we're going to, I don't wanna say outline, but we're going to sharpen some edges, I'm gonna say. So we're not gonna go over the entire leaf edges we're just going to select some sections that for example are overlapping another part of the leaf or another part of the stem and then add a line there and once you have a little section done you can go ahead and play with the opacity so that you can see you know what you like in terms of the blending i'm going to go with 71 percent apparently <laughs> and then you can go and refine other parts of the edges again you don't want to do the entire leaf although i'm pretty much doing this entirely for in this case but <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> you might also want to add a little, a bit more darker details in the middle of the leaf. So something like that. And you can also use this technique to darken one edge or one side of the stem. So not both, but just one. And then you can kind of angle your pencil a little bit to create more of a gradient, I guess. 
with your ear collar towards the middle of the stem. So <laughs> I feel like my explanations are not making as much sense as they did early in the video because I'm getting pretty tired. But you know, look up at the screen and experiment with your own. But what we want here is just to add a little bit more detail and make everything a little bit more crisp and professional looking. Again, just using this detail layer to add some edges somewhere and some shadows somewhere. <laughs> So as you can see here, I sped up the video. Once more, feel free to pause the video and take all the time you need here or just watch what I'm doing to kind of get inspiration and then do it on your own. There's no rule here, just experiment and see what you personally like and what you think looks good with your own piece. And you might also want to use the smudge tool to just smudge <laughs> some of the parts that look a little bit too greedy. So for sure the areas in the middle of the leaf, you probably want to blend them. But again, there's no rule here experiment. I just find that I really like using the smudge tool for the center of the leaf. And the last little thing we might want to do is to add some splatters to really bring this piece together. So for that, create a new layer above the details and rename it to splatters. Now, I personally like to set the blending mode of my splatter layer to linear burn. It is optional. I just like the blending of it a little bit better. So right here. And for now, we can keep the opacity as is. We can tweak it later. In terms of color, you can go back to the initial green. I like to make it a little bit more you know, vibrant so that it pops a little bit more. And for the brush, it's a little bit more tricky. So you can pick the splatter brush from the spray paint panel that comes with Procreate. It is a little bit intense though. <laughs> you could also use this G clay brush here that looks a little bit more like the splatters that I'm going for, but they're really quite dense. Even if you go and just, you know, splatter them around like this, it's quite intense. So just experiment with that. If you only have the free brushes, you can make it work. I'm sure it might just be a little bit more time consuming and you might have to use the eraser. Otherwise, if you have my watercolor brushes, pick the splatter brush that comes with it and then you can just sprinkle some splatters on some parts of your piece. Don't overdo it, otherwise it's going to look way too much real fast but that is a nice way of kind of bringing the piece together and filling some areas that might look a little bit too empty and once you're happy with the placement feel free to play with the opacity as well so you find a blending that you like and if you enjoyed this video and want to have more house plants to keep company to your synaptis i highly recommend you check out this playlist in which i'm going to teach you how to draw a bunch more house plants but before that, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos and then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.